Hello everyone. My name is Ubersui and welcome to Ubersui Labs. Today I'll show you an elevator which I recently made with the create mod. And here it is. As you can see, you can click a button here and it will go to that floor. You will also see that I have a Nixie tube here which will indicate the floor that it's on. And we can also click this button here to recall it back down to the first floor. The Nixie tube will show the floor that it's most recently been on. The elevator can be called to go to any floor. This elevator uses a clutch and a gear shift with a rope pulley. So even if you click a button while it's moving, it's not going to break. Now, the way this works is that on the back of this pillar here where I have the buttons, I have redstone links. So these and the one on the bottom here will send out a redstone signal whenever a button is pressed. And then I have some rose quartz lamps. These store the input of the last button that was pressed. Each lamp corresponds to the floor you want to go to. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. This is because I also built a basement down below here for all the redstone. And the way that these lamps work is that when one is active, it will deactivate all the other lamps. And then on the opposite side here, I have another set of redstone links, and these will just send out the signal of whichever lamp is active. Now I do have another set of lamps over here on the left, and these are just storing the floor which the elevator was last on. And then I just compare these two. So if we're on the same floor that we requested, then we stop. And if they differ, then we move the elevator in whichever direction that we need to go. So each one of these is color coded, as you can see here, and they correspond to the redstone detectors on the elevator here. So you can see lime green is two here. And if we go up a little bit, we have blue, which is three and then four is white. First floor is orange. And then down below, I have black as floor number zero. So as the elevator passes by a floor, these will receive a redstone signal and change the lamp. And once again, it's always the last lamp that received a signal to be active. And depending on which floor is active, that would actually send out a redstone signal here via the comparator. And that is what is updating the number on the Nixie tube you see here. And this is just showing the signal strength of the redstone that we have here. So if the closest lamp is active, then we get a signal strength of 15. But each length of redstone wire we have decreases this by one. And that's why I have such a long line of redstone. Now to demonstrate how this works, I'm going to set the elevator to go to floor zero. It's currently at the top. So as you can see there on the right, we have the requested floor at zero. And the elevator is now going down through the floors. And as it's going down, the lamps are updating with the current floor. And then when the elevator reaches the bottom floor, you'll see that the two lamps are the same. And this is going to activate our clutch up here at the top. And this will stop our elevator from moving. So I try to keep this setup as simple as possible. So all it is is the clutch here, a gear shift to change the direction. So when this is unpowered, it means down. And when this is powered, it's going to go up but only if this clutch is unpowered. And that's all I'm using basically. Now, for every floor, we have a redstone detector here and we can follow them down to the basement. And this is where all our redstone logic is. Now for five floors, you need 11 end gates. And for every floor you add, you need two additional end gates. It may look a little bit complicated, but this is because I've tried to make it as easy to understand as possible. You can definitely reduce the size of this but I think the way I've made it here makes it easier to understand. So some things are going to be redundant, but that's for learning purposes. So what we have is AND gates. These just check if you've pressed the button for the same floor that the elevator is currently on. So if the button for floor one has been pressed, then this redstone link will be active, which will turn off this redstone torch. Now for the next one, we're just checking if floor one is also active. And if both are active, we'll activate the clutch here which will stop the elevator. And it's the same thing for all of these end gates. And as you can see, this one for floor zero is actually currently active. Both torches on top are unpowered, which is gonna trigger our clutch to be powered and therefore it's not moving the elevator. So that's all there is to that part of the room. Now, the next part is the direction of the elevator. The basic way that I'm controlling this is with a powered latch, which is controlling the gear shift up top. So currently we're on the lowest floor, so it's set to off. But if we fly up here and we click on the fourth floor, we can see that the powered latch has switched to on instead, which is going to make the elevator go upwards. Our AND gates have also changed, which has unpowered our clutch, allowing the elevator to move. And as you can see, they will update as the elevator moves to the top. And 
now the elevator finally reached the fourth floor. We can see that the clutch is powered because the floor matches the last button press. So let's have a look at some of the logic over here. This red link here is saying that we're currently on the fourth floor. And if we press either the orange, blue, or green floor, then this AND gate will be triggered, which is going to power this redstone link. And that's the same one as this receiver here. And that is going to go ahead and turn off the latch right here, which is going to change the direction of a gear shift to make the elevator go downwards. Now you can also see that floor zero, which is right here, will immediately turn off the latch. And if you press floor four, it will immediately turn on the latch. Since these are the highest and lowest floors, the logic is pretty easy. Now, if we're on the orange floor here and we want to go to the blue or green floor, then this signal will activate. The same thing here, if we're on the blue floor and if we want to go to the orange or green floor, then this signal will activate. And then finally for the middle floor, which is green, if we press orange, we'll go down. And if we press blue, then we're going to go up. So that's all these gates are doing, basically. I also went ahead and created a schematic of this so you can import it into your own world. If you don't know how schematics works or how the schematic cannon works, you can check my previous video, which goes through all of the different aspects of the schematic cannon and schematics and how they work. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a like. And if you want to see more of my videos, do let me know by subscribing. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time.